Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have x to the power x equals 2 to the power 1 minus x squared. And we're going to be finding all the solutions to this equation. Now I'm going to show you a method to approach these kinds of problems. And then we'll take a look at a little bit of calculus here. So we'll do some tables and you know, we're going to look at the first derivatives. And at the end, I'm going to show you the graph, which is, I think, fairly interesting. All right, great. So let's go ahead and start by LNing both sides. LN, by the way, is the natural logarithm, which is base E. So I'm going to LN x to the power x and LN 2 to the power 1 minus x squared. Now, by using properties of logs, we can basically move these powers to the front, as you know. We can go ahead and multiply by them. So this becomes x ln x equals 1 minus x squared times ln 2. ln 2 is a constant, so it's kind of like a number. Now, the, the purpose of ln both sides is to get rid of the exponents, because when you don't have any exponents, the expression looks more polynomial, or at least, um, you know, it's easier to handle in uh, for many reasons. So now we have the following equation, and you can kind of guess and check at this point. Obviously, it's a little easier. Now, for for example, one thing you can do is set both, of, uh, both sides equal to zero, right? And then from here, you're going to get the following. The left-hand side obviously says x must be positive because of ln, and in order for that product to equal 0, x must be 0. That's what the left-hand side says. The right-hand side says in order for that to be 0, 1 minus x squared needs to be 0. This, this means x equals plus minus 1, right? And by the way, I wrote x equals 0, but that, that's supposed to be x equals 1 because ln 1 is equal to 0, so it shouldn't be x equals 0 because that would contradict what I wrote. So we have the following cases and of course both of them have to happen at the same time. So this kind of tells you that the intersection is x equals 1. Now obviously this doesn't solve this equation completely because we still have to find other solutions if there are any or prove that there are no other solutions. All right, But x equals 1 is a solution and you can also check it uh, with the original equation. right? Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at two functions here. Suppose our first function is f of x equals x to the power x. I think you should know how to graph this. We've done this a quite a few times, but if you didn't, I'll show you one more time. I can go to an ln both sides, ln f of x is going to be ln x to the power x, which can be written as x times ln x. Now I have this equation. I can go ahead and differentiate both sides, the derivative um, the chain rule says this can be written as f prime over f, the derivative of ln function, equals the product rule applies here, the derivative of x times ln x, plus the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, multiplied by x. These two cancel out, leaving us with a 1. And since f of x is x to the power x, if you cross multiply, put it on the right hand side, you get the following. There are also some formulas and shortcuts for these kinds of things, but I wouldn't memorize them. Just L on both sides and differentiate. Make sense? Hopefully. Now, x to the power x cannot equal 0 because, you know, it's only defined for positive numbers and can't even be negative. It can't be 0. 0 to the power 0 is indeterminate, so on and so forth. So, this needs to be 0. And from here, we get L on x equals negative 1, which implies x equals e to the power of negative 1, which means x equals 1 over e. That is a critical point for our derivative. So, what happens to the right and to the left? So, I'm going to go ahead and make a table here. So, my table is going to look like this, x, f prime, and f. The only root for the derivative is 1 over e. The question is, what's going to happen to the right of 1 over e and to the left? Well, if x is greater than 1 over e, right? Then ln x, if you ln both sides, is going to be greater than negative 1. ln x plus 1 is going to be positive. So this tells you that to the right of 1 over e, the derivative is going to be positive, otherwise it's negative. 
which tells you that our function is going to be decreasing on the interval negative infinity to 1 over e and increasing on 1 over e to positive infinity, which means we have a minimum at x equals 1 over e, but if you replace x with 1 over e using our function x to the power x, you're going to get 1 over e comma 1 over e to the power 1 over e as the y coordinate. And obviously you want x to be positive, right? And that's our minimum point. Okay, that's one of the functions. Don't worry, we're going to look at the graph at the end. And that's going to give us a better idea. But let's go ahead and check the second function now. So I'm going to call that function g of x. So distinguish between these two functions. And I would like to differentiate this. You don't need, you know, aligning both sides here. You can just differentiate because this is exponential. How do you differentiate b to the power f of x or b to the power some function? It's the same thing multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is the exponent in this case, negative 2x, times ln 2. We kind of need that correction because when our base is not e, the derivative must be adjusted. Okay? When it's e, ln e is 1, so we don't write it. Set this equal to 0 again. This one is actually easier because this can't be 0. x must be 0. So x equals 0 is our critical point. So we should hopefully either have a max or a min at that point. But let's go ahead and check the table. And I know some folks like to do a second derivative test, which is fine. x, this is g, and actually that's g prime. And this is g. And we have a 0. Now on this table, we need to check whether g prime is positive or negative, right? But it's easy to do. Look, this is always positive. ln2 is positive because it's greater than 1. So it depends on x. If x is positive, derivative is negative. Make sense? If x is greater than 0, the first derivative is negative. Otherwise, it is positive. We have a different scenario here. It's going to increase and then decrease, giving us a max at 0. Okay, so we have a max at 0, comma 2. So 0, 2 is a max. Now, let's go ahead and put it together. Let me show you the graph of this. So our graph is going to increase and then decrease. Make sense? So here's the graph. If you look at the graph carefully, especially I want you to study the graph of x to the power x because that is very common. And the other one is, even though it's exponential function, it's not always going to increase. It depends on the value of x. And actually, for positive x values, it is going to uh, decrease, and for negative values on the negative interval, a negative infinity to zero, our function is going to be increasing from the derivative. So, and our x to the power x is only defined for positive numbers. It's not even defined for zero, so that should be an open dot, and which means this is the only solution, x equals one, and. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.